A few years ago, I stopped using impact drivers for the most part because they're just too darn loud. But I've come to realize they've got one big advantage over driving screws with a drill, and that's that they are much less likely to cam out. Cam out is when the uh, bit jumps out of the screw. This happens especially if the bit is not perfectly aligned with the screw. But with an impact driver, it almost never happens, even with poor alignment. So why don't impact drivers cam out as much? I used to think it was that when they hammer torque-wise, they also hammer forward a little bit. And I mentioned that in a YouTube video and lots of people corrected me in the comments. So I thought I'd do some experiments. So I got a chunk of wood on this bit to keep it from turning and I figure if it hammers forward as it ratchets, it should leave some marks in the steel bar. Well, this was slightly unexpected. Uh, it does leave a mark, and for comparison, this is the same bit leaving a mark when it's just spun in a drill. So the uh, mark from the impact driver is actually much more uh, substantial. So now I'm at a loss. Does the impact driver hammer the bit forward, or does it not do that? If the impact driver does hammer forward a little bit, it should be able to drive in the nail a bit further. So it appears not to be able to drive this nail in at all, and it's really not that hard to drive this nail. It's pretty hard to test this because as this impact driver ratchets, it's pretty hard to keep the uh, screwdriver bit on top of the nail. So I added this block here to help me line it up. And then of course also the bit eventually rips loose in the uh, hole. Ah, shit. Okay, that wasn't actually the point of this video, but it appears at least that the DeWalt hammers forward enough to drive in this small nail. These two, not so much. So while hammering forward certainly helps to prevent cam out, the point that I wanted to make was that hammering forward isn't actually necessary to prevent cam out. So what causes cam out? Mostly I get it if I'm driving with a drill and the bit is not perfectly aligned with a screw, which happens sometimes if there just isn't enough room with it. And to demonstrate that, I've made a model of a Robertson or square drive screw and the screwdriver bit. And notice that these are actually slightly tapered. These square drive or Robertson screws are always tapered a little bit. So here's my screw and here's the bit. And if I'm a little bit off center as I'm driving it, seen from the screw's point of view, it's as though I keep going around and around like this. And if I do that under steady applied torque, what happens even if I keep pushing down on it is it keeps climbing out. And here's an even simpler model of just a uh, flat stick in a slightly tapered slot. So as I apply a uh, torque to this and rock it back and forth, it has a tendency to work its way out because it's always easier to slide where the slot gets wider. And every time it slides this way, then it slides on the back, slides on the front, slides on the back, and it works its way up. Of course, I don't want that bit to work its way out as I'm screwing. So I'm always ramming this down as hard as I can, but it still happens. And that's because the torque is applied over such a small area that the forces pushing against the side of the hole here are so much bigger than me pushing down on it. So the bit still works its way out. So how does the impact driver prevent that even if it's not hammering the bit into the screw as it goes? Well, it's quite simple actually, because it's just a matter of intermittent torque. So imagine this thing works its way up a bit and then I let go on the torque it just drops back in. And the impact driver with its hammering action has a lot of torque followed by no torque followed by a lot of torque. So as this thing works its way out, it's constantly letting it drop back in. And this is also why you don't see as much cam out if you're using a regular screwdriver like this, because as you reposition your hand, you're always letting off on the torque and that allows it to set itself back into the screw. And I've had more frustrating cam outs 
with these uh, Robertson screws or square drive screws than I've had with uh, Phillips screws, even though these screws are in many ways superior. They, uh, the screw just really sticks on there. And I think the reason for that is the effective width of this bit is actually quite narrow compared to, say, this Phillips here. And that means that the uh, forces, the sideways forces on the uh, inside of the uh, screw head here are much greater, which means there's more force effectively helping to push the bit out than there is with the wider bit on here. So there I am criticizing Robertson screws, even though I'm Canadian, and endorsing DeWalt, even though I don't like DeWalt that much. I wish they at least paid me money to do this.